All right. Um, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Emily. If you were if you were at the this morning's um, bash lessons, um, then you remember me. Um, we're going to be talking next about data handling and data transfer on HCC. So um, these are just some setup instructions that hopefully all of you have already taken care of. Um, we are going to do a few um, hands on exercises, not as many as before. Um, but um, if you'd like to follow along with the exercises, um, please do so. Um, make sure that you can log into SWAN. That's what we'll be using. Um, and if you need help with, with that, please go ahead and use the reactions panel, put a, a, a red no by your name. And if you're all ready to go, put a green check mark by your name. That's helpful for us. A lot of people just um, don't do it. So if we don't see a red X mark, we will know that you're, we'll assume that you're okay. Um, a couple of links here um, if you're interested in seeing the schedule for the next couple of days this is our just our main workshop web page um, and then the second link is just our documentation on handling data so a lot of the material I'm going to be talking about is is in there so if you go to our docs page which is just the first part of that link um, hcc.unl.edu slash docs um, it's very um, searchable and browsable page um, so if you want more information specifically on handling data, um, you should be able to find it just by searching or by going directly to the URL that's here. Um, okay, so the topics I'm going to be discussing, as I said, are um, data storage on Swan, Crane, and Attic, which is our um, nearline data archive storage system that's um, available at a subsidized price. Um, we have different file systems that have different quotas and different like um, policies attached to them. So um, it's important to kind of hear this information multiple times. You heard some of it this morning or some of it just um, a few minutes ago from Dr. Yu. Um, and so I'm gonna be kind of reiterating that and repeating it multiple times so that you don't forget it. Um, so I'll talk about storage. I'll talk also about transferring files. So like, um, before you even start running jobs on Crane, you'll probably need your your files and your software and stuff. And so, how do you um, how do you get your files um, and things that you need to and from the clusters, or move them around um, between the clusters, and and where should you put them on the clusters? Um, so, I'll talk about different ways to transfer files. Um, a command line tool that uh, people often like to use because it's very quick and and handy um, that you can use directly from a terminal on your on your um, on your laptop. Or you can use um, what we we typically promote heavily is is uh, Globus is the um, the GUI uh, web based um, transfer uh, transfer tool that we um, that we like people to use. It's it's fast. It's um, it's pretty user friendly and and um, and you can access all of our clusters through Globus as well as your laptop. So I will be demoing how to do that, and you can do it along with me if you like. <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> um, okay, this slide shows sort of a visual representation of the different storage systems that we have in order from left to right of increasing um, ease of access and increasing speed, but um, diminishing redundancy. Um, are diminishing, there's sort of a, a trade-off between um, speed and ease of access and, you know, um, robustness and, and redundancy. So if you, it's, it's difficult to have both in one system. Um, <clears throat> and I will be talking, I will be repeating this uh, in the next few slides. So it's okay if you don't remember everything I'm talking, um, every, every one of these points about these uh, file systems. Um, Attic, if, if you remember, is our um, nearline archive um, which is meant for long-term storage. It um, has off-site backups and it's redundant and it is not mounted to the clusters, meaning that if you want to run a job on the clusters that uses an input file that's on Attic, you will need to transfer that file using um, probably Globus or some other tool that, that um, gives you access to Attic, um, but most likely Globus. You'll need to transfer that to the cluster and put it on one of the, one of the file systems that is mounted to the cluster, like work, um, for example. Um, it is uh, not free, but, but your group can pay a, a, a low subsidized price that's much better than most commercial storage 
um, prices um, for, for access to attic. Um, so home is, um, is next sort of on this image. Um, it has sort of medium speed access and quotas are on the um, individual level. So each individual has 20 gigabytes of home storage. It's mounted on a single cluster, which means that Swan Home, your Swan Home directory is gonna be different than your Crane Home directory. It's just like if a file is in your Swan Home directory, it will not be in your Crane Home directory unless you make a copy of it and put it there. Um, so they're, they're just separate. Um, daily backups are done of home, um, which is you know not necessarily the case for some of our other file systems. Um, common is a little bit faster access. You can access it from your jobs if you include a, a special line in your submit script, which I'll show you later. We'll learn about later. Um, its um, quota is thirty terabytes per group, and you can pay more. Your group can pay more if you'd like more space in common. Common is mounted uh, on both clusters. So Swan, if you put a, a file on your common directory on Swan, you will also see it on your in your common directory on Crane. Um, and it is not backed up. Um, so so don't put valuable data there that you need um, that you expect to be there. You know, if there's some file system um, issue and files are lost, then we don't guarantee that they'll um, that they'll be able to be recovered. Um, Work is fastest, uh, the fastest file system, and it is meant for using um, to read and write files from um, from jobs. So if you have a job that's running, you don't want, and it has to read and write uh, a lot of times to and from uh, in input and output files. Um, you don't want that to be slow because you want your jobs to finish quickly. Um, so work is fastest and it's where you would put files, input and output files for um, for running jobs. Um, it's free, there's no paid access to get extra. Um, it's quota is 50 terabytes per, per group. And it is also just like home, it is um, individual per cluster. So your SWAN work directory is different from your SWAN, um, crane work directory. It is not backed up <clears throat> just like common um, and it is, uh, importantly, and I will repeat this a couple times, it is subject to our purge policy, which um, you know you you need to be aware of. That means that if you don't access a file within six months, it will be deleted. And the reason for that is that we need to um, make sure that work doesn't get you know filled up with it, it slows it down a lot if if it becomes full. Um, so we need people to clean up their old files that they don't need anymore or put them somewhere else. Um, for long-term storage if they do need them um, and just be aware of, of that policy and, and um, make sure that you don't leave anything on there uh, for too long. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to reiterate all of this stuff again. Attic, um, long-term storage, um, it's data is backed up in multiple locations and you can get an allocation for purchase. It is not mounted on the clusters and it is accessible through Globus Connect, which I'll be showing later. Um, so next, um, file systems that are mounted on the clusters are home, work, and common. Um, shortcuts for these, so environment variables you can use um, to access your home directory is dollar sign all caps home. Um, so that's like the tilde was short for your home directory. Um, that's the same as it's the dollar sign all caps home. That's a shortcut for your home directory. And the actual path is slash home slash and then your group name slash and then your individual username. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the quota for home is 20 gigabytes per user and it is not intended for fast input and output for running jobs. There is no purge policy and it is backed up daily. Um, and some examples of things that, that might be a good idea to keep in your home directory are source codes, uh, program binaries, and you know, things like configuration files. Um, work is, um, likewise, there's a shortcut for work. Um, it's slash work, slash group, slash username. The quotas are 50 terabytes per group, and it is intended for fast IO for running jobs. So that's where you should put your job input and output files. It is meant to be a short-term scratch um, workspace, 
and we do have a six month purge policy and it is not backed up. Um, and examples of what to put here, I, I already stated input and output um, data files for running jobs. Uh, common, it is, um, the shortcut is dollar sign all caps common. Um, the path is slash common group username, 30 terabytes per group if you don't pay for extra. Um, and it is mounted on both clusters as the name suggests. Um, so it's not, not hard to hard to remember. Um, and it is not necessarily mount, uh, intended for fast IO for running jobs, but you can um, you can access common um, from your jobs as long as you include, um, we'll talk more about run, um, including SBatch directives in your submit, oops, in your submit scripts uh, when you learn about submitting jobs, but you will need to include, just include this line in your submit script if you need um, your job to be able to access a file that's in your common directory. There is no purge policy, but it is also not backed up. Um, examples of things you might want to keep in common are things that you need to access from both clusters and don't want to have two copies of, such as reference databases or shared data files. Um, just some uh, best use practices for these file systems are to avoid large numbers, not just large files, but uh, you know large numbers of files, because not only is there a quote on the amount of um, and the size that you can store there, but the, the numbers of files that you can store there. Um, and just be aware that storage resources are finite, so be careful about what you store and try to clean up things when you're done. Um, and always, always, always back up your valuable data. We have had um, at least one or two instances of, of people losing, um, you know, months and months of work because they weren't aware of the purge policy or forgot about it or ignored it. <laughs> um, also, please do not put any sensitive or protect, protected data on HCC file systems, on any of the file systems. Um, we do not have any sort of space that's appropriate for that sort of data. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and just do some things. Um, so I'm gonna <clears throat> get out of this uh, slide slideshow view, and we're going to do some exercises together. Um, so these are just exercises we're going to do on the login node on SWAN. So um, if you are logged in, um, great. If you're not, please log in um, through terminal or the command shell on Windows. And we're going, the first thing we're going to do, <clears throat> that first exercise is to find out your group's disk usage. So you can do that by entering the command hcc-du. And this is something that's automatically run when you log in. So you should see this message when you log in, it'll show you how much space that you're using up. So let's um, go ahead and try it. I'm probably not using anything. This is a demo account, so it's gonna be pretty small, but you'll see here um, how much of my home directory, work directory and common directory I'm using. So this is me and my demo three. This is my group. So how much of the quota is my group using? And how much uh, is everybody using? So this is all together. Okay. All right. How did everyone have a, a successful? <laughs> I guess just one command. So um, is everyone able to execute that and see what they're using? Anyone over their quotas right now or or close to them? The next command we're going to try is um, if you'd like to see which of your files are um, going to be purged, then you can um, just run this command to, you know, to create a list. And likewise, you know, mine's going to be pretty boring because this is just a demo account. So I don't think there's any files can, that are going to be purged, but please go ahead and try it yourself and see if you've got any anything that's scheduled to be purged. Sorry, this <laughs> for a demo account, this is extremely um, unexciting. <clears throat> but the idea is for you guys to be running these commands on your own. I know that they exist um, so that you, uh, especially the purge policy and just keeping an eye on this, um, run this from time to time and just make sure there's nothing that's gonna be purged that, that you need. <laughs> If you do have a long list, you can use the spacebar to page through the results and then press Q to quit. 
does anyone have anything raise your hand or or something like that and does anyone have anything that's listed to be purged i'm just curious a lot of your accounts might be new so might might not be okay so let's um do the third exercise so um cdt or work directory so we'll use that shortcut dollar sign work and display the current path um, and list the contents. So I'm just showing you kind of how to move move around between your your home, work, and common directories. That's the point of these exercises here. So um, we're going to CD to work. Oops. I print working directory, and I, it just shows the path has changed. I'm now in work demo demo 03. And then I can do LS and list what's there. I don't have anything in my work directory right now. We'll be putting some stuff in our work directory soon. <laughs> okay, now let's just repeat this for home and common just to get some, um, you know, some practice doing it. OCD home. I'll, and although there is this shortcut, you could also use the tilde as a shortcut or CD with no argument will take you to your home directory as well. Here's the path. And I have a few things in there. So if I type LS, I see the shell lesson data from this morning. Now let's do the same for common. The new path is slash common slash demo, demo three. And there's also nothing in there for me. <laughs> okay. okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Okay, we're gonna talk about transferring files from the uh, using the command line. Um, so SCP stands for secure copy protocol. Um, and you should have this uh, on your computer if you have a Mac, a Mac with terminal or Windows 10 or 11. Um, using the command prompt or the command shell, um, you should be able to use this. Uh, if you can't, for some reason, I apologize, um, you don't need to use this tool. So that's why these, these um, next exercises are sort of optional. Um, I find it a very helpful tool for just quickly transferring a single file or whatever. And so I do use it a lot because um, I like the command line. Um, so the um, the usage of it is to type SCP, which is the um, the program, the name of the program or the command, and then your first argument is going to be basically the source file, and then the second is going to be your target target file. So you're going to, um, if you're transferring to and from your computer, you're going to run this this from your computer. So if you're on your computer, your laptop, and you and you have a terminal open, you don't don't log into Swan, just have a terminal open on your laptop. Um, your source files, you're gonna, you're not gonna need the um, the user at host part. You're just gonna you're just gonna provide the source file name and the location if it's not in your current directory. And then for the user at host colon target file or directory, you're gonna specify your username at swan.unl.edu, and then colon, and then your the full path where you want it to go. Okay. So the, here's an example. So I'm on my on my laptop. I open up a terminal and I type SCP, and then my file that text, which needs to be in my current directory, or or I'd have to specify the path to it. Um, and then where do I want it to go? I want it to go here. So I want it. I want it to go to Swan, you know, demo three at swan.unl.edu. Work demo demo three. Okay. So that's how to transfer something to uh, one of the clusters from your laptop or from when we're going to also do the example where you're transferring something from uh, one of the clusters to your laptop. So, okay, so here's the, exer the actual exercise itself. For this, I'm going to open up a, um, a new terminal window that's, um, um, that's on my, that's not logged into Swan. Make it bigger. Okay, so here I'm in a terminal window that's where I'm not logged into Swan, and <clears throat> I'm going to cd to my desktop, and I'm going to do a scp command to copy something from my desktop. Um, let's see what do I have here. I'll do it. I'll do it ls to see what I have. 
And then I'm going to do SCP. So the file I want to transfer, I'm going to go ahead and do shell lesson data.zip. That's the zip file that we downloaded um, earlier to, to Swan. Um, and where do I want it to go? I want to transfer it to, let's see, the exercise tells me to transfer it to um, my work directory on Swan. So the destination is demo03 at swan.unl.edu colon, and then the full path. And you can't do the shortcut dollar sign work here, unfortunately. <clears throat> And then I have to authenticate, of course, so it's going to ask me for my password and stuff. Okay. So once you um, click approve on your phone, um, it should be transferred, and then you can go back to your other terminal window. Here's the other one where I'm logged into Swan and I can take a look and see if it's there. LS, now I have shell lesson zip there or shell lesson data does it, right? So that's how we use um, SCP to transfer something to the cluster. Um, the next exercise says to copy the job examples slash readme file from your directory on Swan to your computer. So I'm gonna run this command on my, term, on my um, computer again. Um, but the source is going to be Swan, and the destination is going to be my current directory. So I'm just using a, a dot to um, as the shortcut for my current directory, which is going to, you know, I'm on my desktop here. <clears throat> See, I'm on my desktop, so I'm going to do SCP demo03 at one.unl.edu colon, and then the path. And then it's job, and I can't use the um, the tab completion either because I'm not actually on Swan, so it can't it can't look for it. Okay, and that's that's the source. And where do I want to transfer it to? I just want to put it right here on the desktop on my laptop. So I'm going to just put dot, and that will put it um, here. Okay. So of course I have to authenticate. Okay, so let's see if I look on my desktop, I have the, this readme file here that I just transferred. Okay, so that's the basics of SCP. Um, you can also transfer an entire directory recursively using scp-r. Um, so the next exercise actually has us do that. It has us use um, scp-r to transfer the job examples slash MATLAB directory. So that's a that's a subdirectory, not a file, um, from your work directory on Swan to your work directory on Crane. So um, in this case, since I'm not transferring between my laptop and one of the clusters, I'm just transferring from one cluster to the other cluster, I can run it, the scp command on the cluster, right? So I'm running I'm running it on Swan here. And so the command is scp-r recursive. And I can use the uh, shortcut now. So the source file I want is work and then it's job examples. It's actually a directory, an entire directory. And then the target is going to be now I have to specify where it's going, including the you know my username and the host name. Okay, so that's where I want it to go. Um, just in my work directory on Crane. Also Glob Globus, which I'm gonna be going over um, soon. This is, um, the SCP thing is kind of a side. If you can use it, if it's convenient for you and you like it, then then do it. But we typically, when people say, how do we transfer a file? We, we send them straight to Globus because it's just easier to do for most mm -hmm. people. So I'll be talking about that um, here in just a second, and hopefully we have time to finish it. I think I think it'll be fine.
Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, next I want to talk about, um, like I just, like I said, transferring files using um, GUI applications like Globus. So um, you might have a favorite application, and there's a list of some here. I'm not going to talk about them or go over how to use them, um, but you're free to use them. Um, what we recommend to people because we support it and we know how to use it and we pay for it is, um, and it's and it, um, it it is in many cases better than the ones listed above. Um, is Globus. Um, so this provides a fast and secure and robust file transfer uh, with a user-friendly web interface, similar to some of these, um, you know, the clients listed above. Um, and it, uh, unlike the other ones, it, it uses our high-speed transfer nodes by default. So it'll be generally speaking faster, especially if you have, which might not matter if you have small files, but if you have large files or a large number of files and you can transfer either directly between the clusters and attic, uh, if you have allocation there and your personal machine. So um, other features that are very nice with Globus is that you can do file sharing. So if you have some files that you wanna make accessible to anyone, like even people who are not at UNL or you, uh, part of the NU system, um, you can you can give them access to, to your files. Um, <clears throat> So we won't go over how to do that, but we do have documentation on our website of how to create a shared, uh, a shared collection that people, other people, and then give specific people access to it. You don't have to give everybody access to it. Um, so that link there is just our documentation page on how to use Globus Connect. All of the information I'm going to tell you here should be on that page, including screenshots and step-by-step -step directions of how to do this stuff. Um, additionally, if you'd like to transfer things um, to and from your OneDrive. You can use Globus Connect to do that, um, which is an additional um, quick setup. I'm not going to go over those steps either. We're just going to um, do basic file transfers to and from the clusters um, uh, and between our personal laptops using Globus, which is what most people will probably use it for. <clears throat> okay, so the exercises here are to um, go online, so or on, on a, open a browser. Um, and go to globus.org. So I have one open. Oh, I'll just use this one. Um, I'm going to move it a little bit away from there so I can see both things. Okay, so we you're going to just go to globus.org. Um, <clears throat> and then you're going to log in. And okay, good. I del so I deleted my, you know, all my cookies and caches and stuff so that I could show you how to log in from scratch. But normally when you do this, I will remember you and you won't have to um, you, you do this part every single time. But if you can log in through your um, UNL account. So this is not your HCC account. This is your um, basically your UNL uh, TrueU account. But that's because Globus has in common. Oh, okay. And it remembered me, so I didn't have to go through the steps. I guess I didn't, I guess I did log in with TrueU recently this morning, so I didn't have to do that. But you will, it will take you to the UNL um, TrueU login page and you'll just enter your TrueU, TrueU credentials and your duo, and then you'll, you'll be here. <clears throat> so you don't have to create a special Globus account, um, but you, you know, you can, you can, you can, um, Go and create a, a Globus ID and create a Globus account that's not connected to, to your UNL account at all, if you want. Um, or you can have a Globus account and you can link it to your UNL account if you like, but this is a simple way to do it and uh, what most people would, would probably do. Um, okay, so once you're logged in, <clears throat> Um, trans it, the the first oops these aren't numbered correctly so number two should be transfer the job examples directory from Swan to Crane so to do that we go to the file manager tab and search for the collection so the I apologize for the terminology um, being confusing they used to call collections endpoints now they're called collections but it's just a location where your data is stored so we're going to trans we're, we're going to look for the HCC pound sign Swan and Crane. Uh, collections 
and we go to the file manager tab at the top on the top left and then you just click in the collection um, text box and i've used these recently and so it lists them here for me um, but if you haven't used them recently you can just type in the name and search for it and click on it okay now obviously since i i just it doesn't know that I'm, you know, I have an HCC account at all, or that I have access to any files on the, on the HCC clusters. So I have to authenticate so that it knows who I am on HCC. So that's why it's asking me to authenticate on this one. Now you only have to do this per collection every seven days. And I deleted my authentication that I used yesterday when I was testing this out. So now I have to redo it again um, to show you guys how to do it basically. But, you know, it, in principle, it's good for seven days as long as you don't, you know, like like I said, delete your authentication. Um, and I'm going to be demo of three still. Okay, so once you've authenticated, it'll take you back to the page. And then you'll see, oh, for some reason you have to enter manually enter the path. So we want to enter the path um, <clears throat> where we where our uh, files are. So work demo demo 03, and then enter. And then we see the file that we're supposed to transfer this job example job examples directory. Now I need to click on transfer or sync to. And then where do I want it to go? So I click on, I find the other endpoint I want it to go to, or collection rather. So HCC Crane. You know, you can search for it or just select it from the, your, your recently used ones if it's there. And then I, I again need to authenticate, but like I said, if I've done this for Crane in the last seven days, I don't have to. And then once again, I have to enter the path. Okay, so it's showing that MATLAB folder I put in there earlier with HCP. Um, and what I the exam or the exercise has to do to grab job examples and then to transfer it to that location over on Crane, I need to just push the start button and it'll start the transfer. And then you can view details about your transfer. If it's one that takes a long time and you want to see what the status is or something like that, then this can be useful. Um, you'll also get an email um, when your transfer is finished or if there's some kind of error. Um, so it, it, I think you can turn that off probably, but it um, can be annoying if you're transferring lots of things. <clears throat> and then to see if it, this is a pretty small file. So to see if that worked, you just refresh this list and press return. And now I see that job examples is there in my. Uh, work fold or um, work director on crane. Did anyone have a problem with doing that transfer? So you can also transfer to an attic allocation if you have one. So you just enter the attic, you know, HCC pound attic, and you essentially do the same thing. So that's how you would move your stuff into storage on attic. Now, what you probably need to do a lot is, you know, you've probably some files on your laptop that you need to put onto Crane or Swan so that you can run your jobs. So in order to do that, we need to make a collection out of our um, our laptops or or whatever works kind of workstation that you're using. So there is a small piece of software that you have to download and install to create a collection from your um, from your personal computer. Um, so the next exercise just um, demonstrates how to do that. It's fairly quick. Um, so the steps are to go to the file manager tab and click on, if you click on collection, then, um, this will pop up and down here it says get Globus connect personal. So that's the software you have to install on your, on your laptop. So if I click on that, it automatically sees that I'm using a Mac and it suggests that I download the Globus connect personal for Mac. I'm going to show you the steps for a Mac. I haven't done it for Windows recently at all. So um, it, it probably looks a little bit different. So I apologize. 
Um, okay, I did this yesterday, which is why there's more than one. Um, okay, so once it's downloaded, you're going to open it, the installer. And then um, on a Mac, it asks you to drag it to your applications folder. I have one there already, so I'll just replace it. Okay, the next thing is to run it. So I so you can go to your applications folder and click on it or however you normally open up applications. It's asking me if I'm sure I want to open it because it was downloaded on from online. I say yes. <clears throat> yep. Now the first time when so I've downloaded it and then installed it, and then I'm starting it, I'm just running it. And the first time you do it, it will take you through the steps to do the set to set up your laptop or um, personal workstation as a, a collection. So first I need to click allow. It will open up a, a browser window and I'll have to allow it. And then I'll have to give it a name. So I'm just calling it my, you know, Emily's um, work laptop or something like that. Okay, now it's essentially done. So if I if I go, um, okay, and it says successful. So I exit setup. Now if I go back to Globus.org and I click on File Manager, I can click on this collection tab, and then I go to your collections. That will show me all of my collections, and then here it is, M's work laptop. And click on it, and it'll show me, um, my folders, on my laptop. Now. Let's say I don't want all of my folders here. I only want Globus to be able to access, I only wanna be able to access through Globus uh, what's on my desktop, let's say. I can change that in the settings. So if I open up Globus preferences, I can go to access and then I can, let's say I, I remove, I click on the minus button to remove that one and I add, um, click on the pest button and then I can um, I can just browse and I select desktop. So now I, I've and I want to make it writable. I could also in principle make it shareable. This is a special feature that you'd have to um, get um, be added to a list. So just ask us if you need to be able to share stuff from your laptop and we will add you to that list. Um, typically, you wouldn't need to do that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to make it writable so that I can write to it. Um, and I mean, that's it. I don't have to save that. And if I if I refresh here, it will just show me the desktop now. So yeah, so the next exercise was just going to be to transfer something from your desktop to Crane or to work. So it, you're going to do the same thing. I could um, select a file from my desktop. Um, and like this readme file. And then I'm going to, let's say I, I want to transfer it to Crane work directory. So I just click start and it'll transfer it to the crane work directory. Um, but yeah, like the, the nice thing about this, I know it goes a little fast when, when you're trying to do it and watch at the same time. I agree. Um, but the nice thing about it, like I said, it just, it leads you through the process, um, at least on a Mac and I imagine a, on a windows machine as well. Um, and the direct, like I said, the, you know, the directions are, um, well, the, the directions for installing Globus Connect Personal and setting up your laptop. I don't think we have screenshots of that on our on our web page, um, but there might be on the Globus uh, Globus web page. They might have more detailed instructions for it. But uh, you know, it's one of those things where since the windows pop up for you, it, it doesn't. You don't really need unless you encounter some issue or you <laughs> you have a strange operating system, then you probably won't need instructions if you just go through it step by step. Um, but so I can I can delete my endpoint real quick. So I go if I want to look at all my endpoints, I go to um, collections. So endpoint, sorry, endpoints are collections. So I go to my collections, and then I can go here. Here's my M's work laptop. I can delete it. So I can go to the little arrow there and delete endpoint because I don't want that to be an endpoint anymore. And then I will open up Globus preferences. And I want to start over, so I click Delete Globus Connect, 
personal configuration and exit. If I don't con delete the configuration, then the next time I install it and run it, it won't automatically lead me through those steps to set up my collection. So I will be like, you know, it will be much harder to set up an endpoint if it's not leading me through those steps. So I'm going to delete the configuration and exit. Now, now if I um, start Globus, I am not going to reinstall it since that step is pretty easy, but um, I'm going to, I'm just running it. So you can, on, if you're on Windows, however you usually start a program, um, you know, in your start menu or whatever, search for it and run it. And you should get a window, something like this. It should pop up a browser window that makes you click on allow. It should pop up another window that has you name your endpoint. This part was slightly slower, I think. It pops up another window that says successful. So I'm really not doing anything. I'm just telling, I'm just doing what it tells me to do. Okay, now that's it. I'm done. I go back to Globus and I and I want to find my laptop. So before how I found a, a collection was by searching for it. So I'm going to click in the search box. And conveniently, you can click on your collections and just I can just select it from from there. You know, I don't have to enter anything in the search box. So there we go. And then I said, oh, I only want desktop to show. So I open up Globus preferences again. And um, I go to access. And then I'm going to delete what was there. And I'm going to add a path to just to my desktop and click open or yes or whatever. And, and that's it. I close that. I do have to refresh this. I just click on the path here and click enter or push enter. And now it's only my desktop that shows. So that's all the only thing I can access on my laptop um, using Globus right now as it's set up. Um, okay. Well, one other thing that I did just was um, make it writable if I want to be able to write to it. Otherwise, I can just read from it or copy things from it. Okay. So those are the steps again. And like I said, like th the windows just pop up for you. Um, there's not much, you know, I could help you with. Um, if the white window doesn't pop up, then I'm, I'm not sure what to do. I'd have to go back and um, try to troubleshoot it. <clears throat> okay, let's see if there were any, any other slides I had here. <clears throat> I think that was all I have.